Hello there. Today I am going to talk a little bit about the verbs in Spanish. In Spanish language we have three very particular groups of verbs. There are the verbs ending in alpha r, so r, the verbs ending in echo r, so er, and the verbs ending in India ir, so ir. These are the regular verbs, and the regular verbs always follow the same rule. And here we have three examples that we are covering in today's videos. Hablar, which means to speak. Comer, which means to eat. And vivir, which means to live. And also we are going to see how we apply this conjugation with a few examples. For those of you that don't know me, my name is Beatriz Cutillas Moreno, but you can call me BCM, BCM you Spanish. And I had the shock of my life a few years ago when I had to learn English as an adult and I didn't know much English because, well, I didn't know actually any English because all I knew was French from school. And the process was really tough, but in that process I realized of a method, a method that you can use to learn Spanish as a second adult, as a second language, as an adult. And in this method, what I've done is that I am concentrating in exactly what you need to, cons to be able to communicate and I am taking away all the complexity, grammar, that sometimes is more out of interest and it doesn't help us. So, by the way, if you like what you are hearing, please subscribe so you'll be alerted of all the videos that I am uploading. And now, without further ado, let's start with the session. So, what is particular about, for example, these verbs? So, we have uh, what linguistics call the root of the word and the ending. And if you realize, for example, in hablar, the ending is alpha r. So these are the present ten sentence. So the present sentence means uh, you are uh, indicating this verb as what is happening right now. So this is the equivalent of I speak, you speak, he or she speaks. Verbs in Spanish are quite complicated and um, so this uh, video is more of an introduction like to warm up if you like, okay? But nevertheless it will set a very good foundation for yourself to be able to then build that knowledge on top of that. So here you have the pronouns so yo means I, tu means you, él, ella, usted means he, she, or usted is the very formal uh, way to refer, to refer to someone in Spanish like, so it's you, but it's nearly as if it's someone that you respect so much that you talk to this person nearly as in a third person. It's nearly as if you didn't dare to talk to them directly as a you. You speak as a third person who is there. Sort of, okay? So, so we understand. So this is usted, which is uh, for you, but in occasions where you are talking to someone that you want to show a lot of respect or education. Um, I'll actually make a video on this topic as well because it can be a little bit tricky to know when to use to, when to, you, when to use usted. Uh, nosotros and nosotras, so this is nosotros and nosotras. Nosotros means uh, we and when it finishes in o, us is for a group of men, so nosotros, as if I was a man and other men, and nosotras is for a lady and other ladies, no? as we, the pronoun we. The, similar apply, the same applies to vosotros, which is uh, you, but as a group of men, 
or you as a group of women. And then we have ellos as they, as a group of men, ellas as they, as a group of women, and ustedes as a group of people that you want to refer to them as you in a very formal manner. Similarly to usted, that is the plural, ustedes, okay? As I said, this session is introductory. Uh, we will be building up more knowledge on the verbs, okay? So don't worry too much because this is just to become familiarized with how this works. Uh, and verbs in Spanish are pretty um, variable. We have a lot of uh, words to describe the different tenses like past and uh, every, every, um, every single person of the verb has a different ending. Uh, but again, it's just a matter of getting used to. And um, something that I found is that in English language, the verbs are, uh, they are, they are made by a few words, but to add the detail of communication is usually performed by adding other words. And in Spanish, what happens is that that detail is already in each of the words, if that makes sense. So, for example, if I wanted to say um, me gustaría, eh, that is a conditional that says I would like eh, something. But if you realize me gustaría is only two words and I would like something is three words. So see what I mean? There is a lot of variation in these words because they give a lot of info. And so then less words are needed. And in English language, I find that there is less variations in the words like I eat, you eat, he or she eats. It seems very simple, but then the detail needs, requires other words to, you know, to complete. Because let's face it, when we are talking a language, so a language is not just you know, a group of letters and words in a book, a language you need, you want to be able to speak about the fine detail, don't you? So it's not the same, for example, if your mom uh, or your sister says, uh, you know, um, are you going to the shop? And you say, oh, I have already been in the shop. Or you say, I went to the shop. If you say only, I went to the shop, maybe your mom or your sister will be like, what do you mean you went to the shop? <laughs> because it doesn't make any sense. So in order to communicate properly, to give that fine detail, you then say, I have been already to the shop, if that makes sense. So don't be faced by all of this variation because everything will fall into place. Just take one step at a time. We concentrate on this for now. So, hablar. So, hablar, every single verb that falls into this group, ending in a, ar, will follow these endings for the different verbal forms in present, well, in actually in all the, in all the, tens, in all the tenses, but in present in this case. So, I'm going to say, although you have written down here the pronouns, I'm going to say to them. And don't worry about the small writing because I'll make sure that the final video has, you know, is clear enough and has like big words that you can read. So, yo hablo, tú hablas, él, ella, usted habla. Nosotros hablamos, vosotros habláis, ellos, <ríe> ellas o ustedes hablan. So the equivalent of this is I speak, you speak, 
he or she speaks, we speak, Uh, we speak, you speak, yes, you speak, they speak. So in a Spanish language, we distinguish if we have you as one person or you as more than one person. I know, it's, in comparison to English language, it is uh, more work, but it will be worth it, I promise, <laughs> okay? <laughs> So let's repeat this again. Just a slightly switch of mindset, okay? That the persons are different. I speak, yo hablo. You speak, tú hablas. He, she speaks, él, ella habla. But also, usted habla, which is the formal you. Nosotros, we speak, nosotros hablamos, o nosotras hablamos. You speak as a group of people, vosotros habláis, o vosotras habláis. And they speak, ellos hablan. Ellas hablan o ustedes hablan. A group of formal people, if that makes sense. Okay. I know that was a little bit tricky. Let's have a look at comer. So as you can see, the ending. So see what we're doing here is that we are literally splitting this word into the root and the ending. And it's only the ending that changes, okay? And this ending applies to any other verb that is regular, that falls into this group. Another example of a verb that follows in this group is comprar. Comprar means to buy, to buy something, comprar. So it will be yo compro, tú compras, él compra. Nosotros compramos, vosotros compráis, ellos compran, ¿ok? So that's fantastic. I mean, only by looking at this, you are already learning so much. Comer, to eat. So the same applies. So, yo como, tú comes, él, ella, o usted Come, nosotros comemos o nosotras comemos, ellos, no, sorry, vosotros coméis o vosotras coméis, as you, a group of people, ellos, as they, ellos comen, ellos, ellas o Ustedes, a group of people out there that is formal. So the same rule applies. So this is like the root. This is the ending. And here is nearly as if we are splitting that word and changing. Ooh, this one is here. Oh, sorry, this one is here. And this one is here. So the same ending will apply to any other verb that is regular and is grouped in the verbs ending in er, okay? And another example of verb ending in er is beber, which is the uh, translation for to drink. So an example of that will be yo bebo, tú bebes, él or ella, or usted, bebe, nosotros, bebemos, or for a group of ladies, nosotras, bebemos, vosotros, bebéis, bebéis, for a group of 
men, or for a group of women, vosotras bebéis, or ellos, you know, they beben, okay? A question that you may wonder is, what do you do when the, we say a group of people and we say nosotros and nosotras? What do you do if it's a mixed group of women and men? Usually we say nosotros. We go for the masculine. You can also say nosotros y nosotras, but that doesn't really, it's not really uh, common practice. We will say nosotros or we will say vosotros when there is mixed, uh, you know, mixed gender, male and female. Okay. So that's great. Let's have a look at this verse too. So now you know the rules. Again, this is like the root and this is the ending. And in here, what we are doing is that we split our word. Okay. And every single verb that is regular ending in India R, ir, will follow this rule. Okay. And this is this was the verb for to say to live. So yo vivo, I live somewhere. I'm just gonna go with Spanish, okay? Yo vivo, tú vives. See, for example, I don't say usted vives because usted, the formal uh, wording. Is nearly as, as I said before, as a third person. Usted vive. It's like I I cannot even like speak as if it's you directly. You know, it's nearly like I need to speak as if it is a third person. It's so important. That's the concept. So again, yo vivo, tú vives, él, ella, usted vive. Nosotros vivimos, o nosotras vivimos. Vosotros, a group of people here, vivís, o vosotras, for a group of ladies, vivís. And ellos, ellas, o ustedes, viven. So, they live or ustedes viven, like a group of very important people there, again, third person. All right. This is a matter of practicing. Um, I will say the best way to practice, probably listening to some songs, looking at the lyrics of songs. There is a lot of verbs in the songs and by maybe looking at a paragraph and identify where the verb is and say, oh, what would be that sentence? And just wonder and then, you know, then go, oh, okay, I think that's the present of, you know, such verb and it means for you or for they. It may take a little while, but I think it's a good way to retain this information because otherwise it's very much like, you know, it's very robotic. It can be very robotic. Something to highlight is that, as you have noticed, every ending, there is a different ending for each person. Therefore, we don't really need to use the pronoun. We don't really need to say, yo hablo. We don't need to say, El habla or ella habla. But we will see this with the examples below. Okay? Let's go with examples. Thank you so much. I think that you are learning so much. Thank you. So, first example. See if you can guess what is the person of this example. So, someone that says, Hablo español. What will that be? Hablo español. You guessed it. So, yo hablo español. See, there is nothing else that looks like that. There is just one. Is the yo one. So, if I say hablo español, it means I speak Spanish. I don't need to say, I could say yo hablo español, but I don't need to. I can just say hablo español. 
and is much more natural. Now, this is a question. The question marks in the Spanish work this way, okay? One up and one down. So, ¿hablas español? That's a question. ¿Hablas español? So, yes, you guessed it. Basically, what we are doing here is that we are asking someone, Are we, we are saying, do you speak Spanish? But all we say here is, ¿hablas español? Sí, here. And because it's a question mark, we are already referring to you. ¿Hablas español? See what I mean? In English language, it will be, do you speak Spanish? It's a long, you know, it's long, you need more words. In Spanish, you only need those two words. ¿Hablas español? And then it's clear, I'm asking you, if you speak English, sorry, if you speak Spanish. Okay, uh, let's have a look at this one here. So, ellos viven en Almería. So this is an statement. I am saying, they live in Almería, which is a region from Andalusia in Spain, okay? So I'm saying, ellos viven en Almería. So this form here corresponds to this one, see? Ellos viven en Almería. If that was a group of ladies, I would say, ellas viven en Almería, okay? Fantastic. <laughs> Let's continue. So, this one here is a question again. So, the way this is articulated is to say, ¿Y vosotros? ¿Dónde vivís? So, that means, and yourselves? Where do you live? See, again, English language has so many words. Yeah? So, it'll be like, and yourselves? Where do you live? Where is here? What I'm saying is, and yourselves? So, ¿y vosotros? ¿Dónde vivís? ¿Dónde vivís? Say más, ¿hablas español? ¿Dónde vivís? So, with two words, a lot of information. Yeah, and this vivís comes from here. All right? Let's continue. Nosotros comemos juntos todos los días. Nosotros, nosotros comemos here. ¿Sí? Comemos juntos todos los días. That means we eat together every day. Nosotros comemos juntos together todos los días. Every day, okay? Now, ¿y usted come carne? So here I am asking a question again. And I am referring to someone very formally. So, if I wanted to say, if you was a very close friend, I would say, ¿y tú comes carne? So I would say, ¿y tú comes, comes carne? But it's formal. Therefore, I go to the usted here. See? Instead of tú, I go to the usted. And then I say, ¿y usted come carne? And again, I'm asking, do you eat meat? So, another question. ¿Y ustedes viven lejos? So, again, ustedes. Viven, viven. So basically what I am saying here is like, is saying, and yourselves, but in a formal way. Do you live far? So, again, if it was someone that was very close to me, like my uncle, my auntie, or family, very close family, I will say, ¿y vosotros vivís lejos? So, ¿y vosotros? Like you, informal you. Y vosotros vivís lejos, but because it's formal, I say, y ustedes viven lejos, is like, is that distance. Basically, the formality is all about distance. Like, I'm not directly talking to you. 
It's very bizarre, isn't it, when you think about it, but it is the way it is, the language. Ah, the last two examples. Ellos comen muy bien. It means they eat very well. So, ellos comen muy bien. Now, one for the ladies. Ellas hablan dos idiomas. Ellas hablan dos idiomas. Hablan ellas. So, they, these ladies, speak two languages or two idioms, but we say languages really. Okay? And that is everything for today's session. I hope that you have learned a lot. Please write in comments if you have any question. Please write if there is anything particularly new that you have learned today. And if you would like me to cover anything in particular in one of the videos, I would love to know. I actually feel very curious to know why is it that you are learning Spanish? Is it because you have very close relatives that are Spanish? Is it because you are planning to live in Spain soon? You may be there already or you may be planning to like travel all South America. I'd love to know if you would like to leave me a comment. Uh, if you like my, my teachings, please subscribe so you will be alerted of all the videos that I'll be uploading. And that's all. Thank you very much. And don't forget that you are important, that you are significant and that you matter. So get communicating in Spanish, break free from any translation work, become every time more and more independent. Comunícate en español y libérate. Muchísimas gracias.